have finally got it. Yes, welcome people to a very special video today where we've actually got the we've got Joe's Pole Star in Need for Speed. He now we're actually are doing a couple of things in this video. We're gonna see how fast it actually goes. We're gonna be upgrading it to the full maximum with all the ultimate pulse and ultimate parts on this pole star. Now, if you actually do want to actually get your hands on this, it's not gonna happen, people. So this is basically an exclusive look and how the car actually does handle in Need for Speed. He now if you're actually brand new to the channel. Hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more content like this because I've got another video coming up very, very soon which you probably won't want to miss. Now, with all that being said, yes, this is Joe's Pole Star. I've tried to get it all replicated as much as possible. The one thing that you probably notice that it's lacking is those decals. Now, the reason why I actually chose to put the decals on it because if you actually do look on a certain screenshot, there's no decals on this. It is just basically the color yellow. So that is what I wanted to keep as it is. Just completely original. And look at this. I'm going to show you something right now. Watch this. Now, if I actually do get my Collector's Edition of the Pole Star on Need for Speed. If you see it right now, there actually isn't no decals on this. So this is how I've actually done it in the game. If you actually do want to get hands on this, it's not going to happen. These are like exclusive, limited edition. But yeah, let's just get straight to the customization. Now, I just want to say one thing as well. Thanks for Godzilla for actually making this possible to happen to actually drive Joe's Pole Star in Need for Speed Heat. Now I'm actually dead excited to actually get with customizations because I want, we, no one actually knows how fast the top speed of this is and the acceleration, how it actually goes, how actually good it is around the corners once it's fully upgraded with all those ultimate plus parts. This is going to be an awesome video. So the performance, this is what it is actually equipped with. It is equipped with the normal Pole Star ratings and just like Pro Plus parts that you actually do once you actually do purchase the Pole Star standard. But we have actually got some engine swaps people to actually go through. We need to start the engine. So this is what it actually sounds like right now once it's it's got the it once it's got the 2.0 liter hybrid engine into it sounds amazing i could probably keep that in this but no we're gonna go for the full we're gonna go for the full engine swaps we're gonna go for this the v.8 v6 forge engine swap people and we're gonna equip that 610 thousand for this never mind um here we go the ultimate plus parts the crankshaft we finally did actually manage to get ourselves the ultimate part for the cooling which on a previous video we didn't actually unlock that we do need to get the ultimate plus which actually does make quite a lot of difference but it doesn't really matter does it as long as we've got the ultimate parts equipped as much as we can on this so we've got the ultimate plus exhaust the ultimate plus turbo we should have so i could put a supercharger in it but we're not going to do that because it actually doesn't get the maximum speed and 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 so on on the post star so we're going to go for the dual turbo charger so here we go with the suspension obviously we're going to go for the track because obviously i already own one so we're, we're definitely going flat so for the elite brakes we already own that as well and for the tires this is where things do get more technical and you have to do have to you do you do have to pay attention people say equip the speed cross tires no you don't want to do that if you want to do a car like this and you want it to be more roadworthy you definitely do want to then go for the track tires because look at that it gives us an, it gives us an extra 0.5 acceleration on this pole star right here so obviously we've still got we don't have a, yeah we've got an elite plus on that we actually do get a high speed to a 10 we've got our power to 10 we've got a full rating of 400 plus on this pole star we just need the acceleration up, which I'm guessing that's got to do with the cooling, unfortunately. Um, that is a very, that's going to annoy me so much. It really is going to annoy me not having a full 10, 10, 10. But we could probably do that in the next video. Now, this auxiliary. What do I actually choose for this? We could actually choose a repair kit, or we could choose a nitrous refill. Now, since we actually are getting a heat 5 level chase, we do want the times to repair kit. For our safety on caution, as well as the damage reduction. We're going to make this an absolute tank. And it's going to be so powerful, no one is going to be able to get us off the road. Now, obviously with me, you know I like to show you what the engine swaps do sound like. So that is what we're going to do right now. Now, so far our end stats, we've got a current horsepower of 1,333, which we could get a potential horsepower of 1,430, but we're actually not really that bothered. So we do not to see it is 2.20. The max torque is 1,000. Our top speed is 235 people in Joe's Polestar. I can't wait to actually do a race on this and get a Heat 5 chase. This is going to be, this is going to be about memories for getting a chase from Danny Shaw on the first prologue on Need for Speed Heat. This is going to be fun. I get so many people asking me, what is your life tuning for your cars? Well, this is what I put on this post style right here. I've got the serious sensitivity on high because I like to have 
that fast response of steering when you actually when you come round to a corner. You need to have that fast response time if the car's more about grip than it is drifting. And then we've got downforce to low because if we actually do have it on high, we then do lose some miles per hour. We, we only lose one miles per hour, but then again, that does make a difference. To actually control off, and our drift style is gas. That is my live tuning for the name of all my setups on a game. If you want me to go in an in-depth review on my live tuning and some customization on videos, comment down below, give me some feedback, and I'll hopefully get that video on the way. Now, when it actually comes to races, one of my favorite races to do because it's very easy to do, and you get 19,000. Obviously, I know it goes down if you don't respond to a garage, but if you do, it then goes back up. But this is the race I actually do most of the time, simply because it's fun, it's got loads of ramps, and it's just overall an adrenaline pump on the game. So it's called the Circuit Race of the Reaction. It's like this back side of the map, near downtown Palm City. If you actually want to try it out yourself, I definitely do recommend so. Very easy money on the game. With that being said, <laughs> let's just get straight into this. Like that annotation right there at the pole star, knowing that you own it in Need for Speed Heat, is it's just a dream come true. It really is. It's very strange. But anyways, we are go, people. Look at this. It's just straight off the mark. The acceleration, the handling as well, is very, very responsive. And it definitely does like to get his back end out. Which is a very good thing on this, considering we've got some tight turns coming up as well. But yeah, oh my god. I can't believe I'm actually driving Joe's Polestar on Need for Speed Heat. And now I am the owner of this car. Obviously, back to referring about the KS Edition cars. Obviously, this is the KS Edition Polestar. Why couldn't we get this if we had it pre-ordered it or got the Deluxe Edition? Or even if we've got the Ultimate Edition, you actually got this car. It, it, it completely baffles me. Why they haven't let us get it? Or let have got something planned in the future, which could be possible. I'm hoping it is possible for you guys. We had too much traction around the corner, but here we go. The last corner, and we are at the finish line. There we go. That crazy transition. We're straight into a Heat 5 level race event. So, yeah, look at this speed. Look, it looks, it looks glorious in the nighttime. Really does, but, yeah, these are going to be easy. We've got loads of coppers everywhere, though. So, this is going to be very interesting. Got one repair left. There we go. There we go. Is that a Corvette? I think that's a Corvette. Yeah, so we've seen a Corvette. We're going to put the nitrous right now, though. We're escaping already. Look at the speed of this. Wow, the speed is crazy. Currently third, though. That is not good at all. There's a second car. It's a Bagani. We're straight past him. Very easy. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I don't know what car is actually first, but Lena. Is that Lena Navarro from Payback? Have I just found an Easter egg? A rhino's just sat there doing nothing. Wow, they need to sort this game out. They need to do some updates on this game. A rhino just sat there doing nothing. We keep escaping and then we keep getting the chase back on. I think the only thing that people want in the Polestar, really, realistically, is that spoiler. Because obviously it's a unique spoiler. It's a one of a kind. And it looks beautiful. But we've got 500 yards remaining. That is it. And then we're finished. And then we should have ultimate plus part. Don't crash at the end. So we've earned a volatile part. Not much of a chase though, is it? But they are clever. Look how clever this copper is. There we go. They stay near your safe house where you want to go. That is where they get their own personality from. Which is very, very, very cool to be honest. And I thought it was a cop car, but it's not. It was actually a helicopter. If I, if I remember correctly, I think there's a ramp up here. Yeah, there is. Out the way. Out the way. This should lose them. Should lose them. We should start escaping right now. There we go. No, we're not. They're on us again. I'm going to block myself in in a minute if I'm not careful. So down here, just like that. And we've got two head on that are taking the ramp as well. We need to get rid of that helicopter. We've got four coppers after us as well. Come on. Go away. Just go away. Let me escape. I underestimated the Heat 5. I thought it was going to lose him quite straight away, but no. Right, our Nitrous again. We've got a Rhino as well coming. Oh my god, this is crazy. Absolutely crazy stuff. We've got one repair left anyway, so we're okay at the moment. Yeah, don't do a spike. Please, don't do spikes. We've got, we've got more reinforcements coming. And we've got loads coming. And the Rhino. Easy, straight out of the way. Generally thought this would have been a lot quicker to get rid of the Heat 5 wanted chase, but no. Apparently not. Right, we're finally escaping. There we go, so we've escaped. We need to find a safe house. Are we near? Yeah, we're near safe house as well, so that is perfect. 
It's, it's turning down here. Just like that. Hopefully, we haven't got a cop car hovering around our area where we need to go because they're very clever with that. Our safe house is only just around the corner, people. And then we've actually done our first Heat 5 level chase escape using the Polestar. There we go. We've actually escaped the police on a Polestar. That's Joe's. Man, I, how much... Right, so we didn't get a lot of bank. How much rep gain do we actually get? So we got 85,000 times 5, obviously. So that's a pr pretty good score in the Polestar. Considering it didn't last that long. We're already level 50 anyway. But it's the performance part. So we did get our ultimate cooling part. Yes, so we actually do finally get our 10, 10, 10, 10. So, yeah, people, that is it for today's video. I hope you did actually enjoy it. I enjoyed absolutely... I absolutely adored using the pulse start in Need for Speed Heat. It's a very good experience. It's definitely actually good to use. Now, anyways, let's get on with the review and what I actually do think about it towards the end of the video. Now, what I wanted to do was basically to talk about the pulse start, and this one I'm going to do from now on is basically giving a proper in-depth review on how the car actually does handle once you've actually fully upgraded. So, my overall rating for the pulse start, Joe's pulse start, and probably the normal pulse start in the game, it definitely did get an overall rating of 10 because it was very, very enjoyable to actually use, and that is why I've done an enjoyable rating of 10 as well. Now, it is definitely five star heat level ready. You definitely do want to actually use this to get rid of the Heat 5 level. I definitely do recommend as well, obviously, using the two times repair that you can actually equip on this and then using the extendable damage as well. Now, the key pros about this is the top speed. It's the 230 plus miles per hour. The handling is a key con. Unfortunately, it is because when you actually do go around the corner, you have to pull the handbrake quite a couple of times to actually be able to get around the corner without crashing. Now, the best engine swap as well is the 3.8 litre V6. I, honestly, I just loved it. I love the sound of the grunt and the purring when it's actually stationary as well. And then the cost after the end of swap cost between 220,000 and 650,000. That was once I actually equipped the ultimate plus cooling part on this Polestar. So yeah, people, I really hope you actually did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. And obviously, turn that bell notification on as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.